want them to stay afterwards and okay stay a little bit briefly afterwards and reverend neil will just um say good morning in person so um and if you're here in person we do have some snacks in the back we hope you will stay and and have a little social time so if you would like to be informed of our weekly newsletters um please leave your email um, in the chat or you can go to the contact page on unityofpayson.org and leave a message there so we do warmly welcome you and let's say together our blessing we love you we bless you and we welcome you um, so now it's time for our gratitudes and we are grateful for everyone that supports um, unity of Payson with their time and their talents and their treasures. Um, and we're also grateful for all the events that take place in this small but very active church. So um, we would like to invite you to share your gratitudes. Is there anyone that has a gratitude they'd like to share? I will start. <laughs> I have so many I could go on for it, but but Neil told me I can't talk too long. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I I just I'm so grateful to be here to be part of this community. We did a um, tamale making class yesterday out at Shante Olmsted, which was the first time I got to get out there, which was just wonderful to see and and a wonderful tour from Rom. So um, I am just so grateful for all the connections. So I guess I get to give the gratitude too. I am grateful to Tom Quirk, not only our board president, but the person that <clears throat> makes us work technically. Uh, sometimes we have a hitch or two, uh, but we're getting there. And Tom's son, Matt, was here yesterday when we worked through it and when we were practicing it and uh, was of great help. And I'm grateful that we can actually broadcast live again. And I'm grateful for Annie's husband, Jim, who just brought a little piece of equipment that we oh. need. <laughs> and that we so we may get you up and easy. running. <laughs> Anyone else have a gratitude they'd like to share? Well, then I will also say that it has been great having um, Cinnamon Twist here and the energy in here, and I'm, I'm sure that's coming from online too, has just amazing. Okay, so um, we're going to move into um, talking about our prayer chaplains, but as we're seeing, unity is grounded in meditation and affirmative prayer, and I do think we probably all need to affirm that our technology works perfectly every time, right? <laughs> so we do have chaplains available to pray with you after the service. I'm here. Um, Betty is here. I think that's it, right? And Donna is online if anybody wants to contact her online. And so your prayer requests or your prayers are always sacred and confidential. And then we send them also on to Unity, their prayer chapel, where they will pray for you for 30 days. So if you would like personalized prayer, and we do have forms in the back to fill out too, if you would like to just put a form in the box back there. And if you leave your email or your phone number, we will reach out to you. Okay. Yeah, Rick just mentioned he's very, uh, Teresa said she was very grateful for the warming center, which has got to be just a wonderful place, especially this time of year. All righty, so um, Unity, Unity of Payson's theme for December is Advent, and our affirmation is, I make way for hope, peace, joy, lo and love to emerge in my life. Can we say that together? I make way for hope, peace, joy, and love to emerge in my life. 
Today's speaker is the Reverend Neil Worthington, and he is going to be talking about peace, the fruit of awareness. And um, peace, I think, is something, you know, that is so needed in our world today. And so our metaphysical mo moment this morning, of course, focuses on peace. And I took it from the Unity um, Advent booklet. So I don't know how many people have this Advent booklet, but I find it as just a wonderful resource during the Advent season to bring that Christmas experience just deeper to you. And one of my favorite phrases is the peace that surpasses understanding or the peace that transcends understanding. And I think that's where we need to go for peace to be in this world. So our metaphysical moment this morning is from um, from one of the readings from this week, adapted a little bit. And so it says, many of us have experienced a momentary feeling of peacefulness. And we also have come to know that the ways of the world have an uncanny ability to pull us out of our feelings of peace. Advent calls us once again to return to the deep inner peace that is realized as the tranquility of conscious connection with our divine truth. I'm going to read that sentence again because for me it took a while for that to sink in and I really think that's important. Advent calls us once again to return to the deep inner peace that is realized as the tranquility of conscious connection with our divine truth. While we may succumb to the ways of the world, we are we can always return to the peace we find in the depth of our innate relationship with God. We needn't wait for Advent. We possess the ability to access this divine gift at any moment we desire. We need only to command our thoughts with the words, peace, be still. When we live from the knowledge that we are spiritual beings, when we see ourselves as both divine and human, Peace is ours and nothing and no one can take it away. And then from Mark 4, 39, he woke up and rebu rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. And now Reverend Neil will share the message. Well, whether you're here or whether you're online, you can notice the little wreath up here, the Advent wreath. And two of the candles are lighted. Of course, last week we lit the candle for hope, and then today the candle for peace. Last Thursday, December 7th, in New York City, 59th Street at Central Park, there was the lighting of the largest Hanukkah in the world. Anybody know what a Hanukkah is? It's the menorah, the candelabra, that holds nine candles. The Advent menorah, called a Hanukkah. I had to look up how to pronounce that, but uh, I, I like the word Hanukkah. So uh, it s starts off, started off, now we're in the middle of it, the Festival of Lights. And I want to share a little bit of a story about the Festival of Lights. It began in the second century of this Christian era. And it began at a time when uh, Israel was dominated, not by the Romans as they were in the time of Jesus, but by the Greeks. And the Greeks were threatened by this spiritual community, this uh, spiritual, uh, this faith tradition. And so they began to repress that bit by bit, eventually getting to the point where they took the temple and banned Sabbath, for one thing. But secondly, put a big statue of Zeus up in the temple and offered pigs for offering in on the altar in the temple. Well, if 
you're Jewish or even if you know anything, that probably is a very, very difficult situation, very chaotic, very frightening, but that's where it all happened. Then there began to be a resistance to that. Uh, we know the name of Judas Maccabeus. Shakespeare uh, will give us that. Handel wrote an, or, uh, an oratorio uh, called Judas Maccabeus, and it's come down through history. This was a resistance of a few in the Jewish community who did not stay uh, at ease with the injustice of what was, but wanted to reclaim their faith, their faith tradition. It went on for a while through three different armies of the Greeks. Uh, it was more like a guerrilla warfare than anything else. And eventually, eventually, the community reclaimed the temple. So when they went to the temple, it was in shambles. And one, only one little jar of oil was there, this sacred oil, and it took eight days to make that oil, but only one jar was there, enough for one day. What a predicament. But they lit the lamp anyway. They returned the light to their temple, and guess what? I hear somebody uh, kind of mouthing the words, it lasted for eight days. That jar of oil <coughs> lasted for eight days. And thus we have the menorah. Nine candles, eight for each one of the days of Hanukkah, and the one candle in the middle called the shamash, which was the candle that lit all of the other candles. It's a wonderful figure that talks to us about how we bring peace back into this world. Part of it's almost like a miracle, part of it's our doing as well. I wanna go on from my story. We'll take it back up again at the end like I often do. As I considered this peace that were there, I realized that part of the reason, maybe a big part, is that we're not aware of the peace that's available to us. Sue talked about a little bit about uh, how there's a per peace that passes or, tr or transcends all understanding because it's peace that comes from within. We know that the Christ within, not some figure outside of us, is where the truth comes to us. And so that peace within, we're often not aware of it, or we don't act like we're aware of it. Sometimes the chaos in the world is so great that we can't seem to access it, or we're drawn away, as that reading said, from that. But peace is there, and that's what I want to talk about today. Being aware of peace, and I put together a key spiritual truth. Peace is possible when we affirm it, allow it, and become it. Peace is possible when we affirm it, allow it, and become it. We'll talk about the possibility of peace. That's right there in that key spiritual truth. We'll talk about a little bit about how it connects with the very purpose that we have as expressions of the divine and as humans here on this planet. And a bit about being empowered to live the truth. So what about the need for peace? Again, Sue, you're doing a good job. You, talk, you referred to that need for peace in our society. Sometimes it's so chaotic. This side against that side, throw everything up in the air, take away all tradition, Start something new. Don't consult anybody else. It's chaotic. And our society can be that way. Well, how do we live? How do we uh, celebrate the emergence of peace in this world? 
in this chaotic world. So it really is similar to the situation of Israel in the time when Hanukkah began. Totally chaotic. Fearful. And so we find ourselves in a similar place, perhaps, well, for sure, not to the extreme of the story of it. But it also was the milieu around the birth of Jesus, whose birth we celebrate on Christmas in our Christian tradition. Because Israel was occupied by the Romans at that time. The taxes were great. The demands were many. In fact, Mary and Joseph, when Mary was pregnant and about to give birth, had to leave and go to a town where they were born, but not, they didn't currently live there, in order to uh, comply with the regulations of the Romans, and that chafed with them. So it's obvious that the message that the angels brought when they came to the shepherds out on that hillside, peace on earth, goodwill toward all people, was a very appropriate message because it really poked right into that chaos of that particular time. And what we want to do is to poke into the chaos of our time and maybe the chaos of our lives as we consider this today. Today we realize the need for peace in the midst of that chaos, in the midst of what separates us, in the midst of, yes, even hate. And we know <coughs> when we are aware of it, when we can get back to the awareness, we know that all things do work together for good. That we are expressions of the divine that we, in fact, are co-creators with the divine as well. And so we have a role in all of this. I really like one of the New Thought authors, who was a contemporary of our founders, uh, Myrtle and Charles, called Wallace Wattles. Anybody know Wallace Wattles? Wrote a book. I'm not sure. I, I'm not crazy about the title. But I like what he had to say. It's called The Science of Getting Rich. And uh, I just wanted to quote something for that because it, it demonstrates this truth so poignantly, this truth that we play a part in the role of creation. Here we go. Wallace says there is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspaces of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. A person can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. Well, yeah, we can sort of agree with that. But I'm not sure, and I'm talking to myself as well, that we really live in the light of that truth, that we are divine expressions, that we are given the ability to participate in creation of our own reality through our thought. Kind of behooves us to do a little bit of control on the thought level, to grow that ability to think as we desire to think, to make real our participation in the bringing of the divine out into our world. And today we would say in the bringing of peace, peace. Peace is possible, yes when we affirm it? Do we take the opportunity, as I sometimes don't, confession, to affirm peace 
Do I affirm something that's negative or that's uh, full of maybe uh, angst or fear or puts me apart from somebody else? Or do I aff affirm the peace that, again, transcends all understanding? But why would we even pursue peace? Well, well, we do that, I think, because it's the very living out of our purpose. Of course, yes, each of us have an individual purpose. We have a unique identity, and we have that that we can express into the world. Some of us know that. Some of us are still looking for it. But we all have a purpose that's overarching, that's bigger than even our unique identity, and that is to be expression of the divine. We have four omnis that we talk about often, omniscience, all-knowing, omnipotence, all-powerful. Uh, I'm getting to omnibeneficent, which is all good. Which one am I missing? Omnipresence, all present. These qualities are the qualities of the divine which we are challenged to express in the world. And when we do that, the world is drained of chaos. Maybe first in a very small way, but in a way that we can participate in that eventually affects the whole. If we don't pursue peace, we are destined to live in poverty as a goal. Not necessarily financial poverty, but poverty of spirit. It's there for us. The possibility of it is there for us. But if we don't use it, we are poor. There's a scripture that says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Spirit it is that does a little bit of a, a different thing than the society tends to do. Doesn't take political might, doesn't take physical might, and make that what changes the world. But it takes a power that is within us. That power of power that we talk about when we talk about the 12 powers in, in unity, that power within us, and bit by bit, bit by bit, strongly chips away at that which is separate, that which is fearful, that which is hateful. That's why we would want to pursue peace, because it's, it's part of our very nature to do that, part of our purpose as dis divine expressions. But getting down to how we would do that, and I like to think it's a matter of living in that power that I spoke of. Do you think of yourself as powerful? I have to, uh, again, do a little confessing here. It wasn't very long ago, within the last two months, I think that in my meditation it came to me that I was really a very timid being. That I wasn't claiming the divine power, that ability to master, that ability to control myself and my situation. I wasn't claiming that. And I wasn't living it. That's the heritage that we have, but we must claim it and live it, live in our power. And the big thing I referred to once before was choosing our thoughts. Oh, we talk about monkey mind. Oh, I can't. My, my mind just goes wild. Have you realized that you have the ability to control your thoughts? Have you given yourself the challenge of controlling your thought? 
Imagine the possibilities if you could control your thought. Well, you can. So don't bemoan the fact that there are so many reasons you can't control your thought, but get on with working on controlling your thought. You do have that ability. So all of these things, the great possibilities that are there, remember that substance, that inexhaustible substance, that source of all things that we often talk about when we refer to God or the universe or all that is, that's there for us. But how do we put it into play? And of course, as always, I have some ideas about that that I want to share with you. Triple A, B, I'm going to call it. Three A's. And so this is so you can remember. This is the first exercise in controlling your thought. Okay? You're going to remember this. Triple A, B. How do I do that? Infirming. Uh, affirming. Uh, we'll get into the next one. Affirming or envisioning. Uh, the visioning process, Joanne showed me a book that I referred to a couple weeks back, and uh, she's got it. She started reading it. Affirming the truth of all that possibility that's there. Affirming the fact that we can be participant in that, that we can be the peacemaker, or as we're going to hear soon, the instrument of peace. Remember that prayer of St. Francis of Assisi? It's going to be sung, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the text of it before. I hope you don't mind. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, as we celebrate it now, and where there is sadness, joy. And I'll leave it there. So A, affirm it. Affirm that. The more you say it, the more you will become it. Say it out loud to yourself if nobody else is there to listen. Affirm that peace, the peace that transcends human or ordinary understanding. Second A, and this is a biggie, allowing. So often we try so hard to get what we want. We do that on technology. We try, we've been trying for two plus years to make things work. And I have to realize that I've done a lot of that. But sometimes when we sit back and say, I've done what I need to do and allow, take our hands off of the process, things happen. They've begun to happen here with our AV. We have a little work yet to do. But allowing, do you take all of those challenges that you have and at one point say it's time to step back and allow? Remember, we are spiritual beings. The resources of spirit are at our disposal. Sometimes that all we need to do is allow them. Affirm, allow, Third one is that connection with spirit, and I call it angel connection. We had morning coffee the other day, and a story was told there about, and it was interesting because it was technology, about difficulty with technology and the number of hours that it consumed to try to get something to do. And finally... Stepping back allowed an angel to appear. Oh, not one with wings. Not even that 
angel in our consciousness, but a physical angel. So whether it be in our consciousness that we allow the angel to show up, or in our physical world, that angel connection is so important. The story was of after long and earnest trying to say, what? I never had this technology before in my life, and I'm trying to battle it out right now, and life won't end without it. I'm going to say I've done what I should do. I'm stepping back. And within hours, the angel appeared and took care of the challenge technically. It was a wonderful story. It was great to hear that. So you got that. Affirming, allowing, you're, you're, you're using this, this, this thought mind, right? Affirming, allowing, an angel connection. Just allowing spirit to be there for us. And then finally, becoming an instrument of peace. We had a our usual Saturday afternoon soul boost yesterday. And one of the things that the group came up with, it's a wonderful time, by the way, if you, you four o'clock Saturday afternoon, if you can jump online, Saturday soul boost, and I'll share some things about the message that's gonna come up, and I'll get a lot of feedback. It's really helpful to me. But one of the things that, that, that came up was, how, how do I do something? What do I do to become peace? What do I do to promote peace? What do I do to become an instrument of peace? So I'd like to suggest something very simple. Ask yourself the question, what can I do to be an instrument of peace today? If you do this every day, It'll change you. It'll change your life. It'll change the situation around you. What can I do to be an instrument of peace, divine peace? And you'll find it. It may seem very small. It may be complimenting somebody else. It may be as simple as a smile. It may be... Uh, Speaking the truth as you know it. Might, that, that might even sometimes rub somebody else the wrong way. But what can I do today to be an instrument of peace? Whether I'm sowing love, happiness, any of those things that we are going to hear again in the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. So you got it? Affirm, allow, get that angel or that spirit connection and become an instrument of peace in one way every day. I challenge you to try it for this next week. See what difference it may make for you. Remember that key spiritual truth. Peace is possible when we affirm it, allow it, and become it. Remember I told you about that uh, menorah, that Hanukkah menorah, the Hanukkah. Well, the one in Central Park is 36 feet tall, biggest one in the world. And in the center is that candle or that lamp called the Shamash <coughs> candle. Be the Shamash. Take that light and light something else up. That's what being peace in this world is all about. And so it is. Amen. Uh, I remember that I've been told that I'm supposed to stand here now and to say we're, we're going to have uh, uh, the song by Cinnamon Twist as we go on into our meditation.
I see, grant that I may not see to be heard, but to hear, to be consoled, but to console, not to be seen, but to see, to be loved, but to love. Oh, when we give love, we will receive. When we forgive love, we'll find reprieve. It isn't dying, we'll be released. Make me an his hand continues to give us a little musical background. It's now time for us to quiet ourselves, quiet our minds. This is one bit of mind control. Do it the best you can for as long as you can. Quiet your mind. Quiet your body. Breathe. And be grateful. So in this quiet place, remember that peace is very natural. Hate is not. Dissension is not. Separation is not. And in that remembering, affirm that I am peace. And as you think of your own life, think of what you've grasped onto so tightly that if you could just let go, you'd experience that peace that you remember is a very natural thing. And then open yourself to spirit. Look for that angel. Look for that connection with the divine within yourself that will allow you to express peace in this world. And then ask yourself the question, and we'll ask this question and we'll go into the silence. You'll hear your own answer. How can I be an instrument of peace today? How can I be an instrument of peace now, here? Consider this in the silence. Spirit has spoken to you, and you have listened. So you know a step, however small, that you can take 
to become an instrument of peace. So as we bring our awareness back to this time and this place, bring with you that step that was revealed to you. Purposing to live that out, to be peace in a chaotic world, perhaps a chaotic community, perhaps even a chaotic family. Peace that transcends all understanding. So if you've closed your eyes, open them now as we come back to this time and place. And be grateful. Breathe. Peace. You are peace. And so it is. <coughs> and so it is. I can definitely feel the peace in this room. Wow. <coughs> so now it is time for our, our offering. Um, so Unity of Payson so appreciates all the gifts and offerings that are given <coughs> to this ministry. Your gifts go not only to support this community here, but the larger community. So as you listen to the offering song, you will have time to make your contribution. And the information for giving online or if you want to um, also do that here, I find it's very easy to do it on the phone when I'm sitting here. Um, so that information is up on the slide. Um, so if you would please bring your attention to your gifts at this time and bring to get our Bring to mind your heart's desires, <coughs> and together we will affirm the offering blessing. Freely we give, and freely we receive. And the offertory song is a very special song today um, called Peace in the Night by our own Anne James. Sometimes we become aware through things we hear. And I had trouble writing this first line because sometimes it's not because of the way things are. It's the way we hear them from the news or from our hearts or from our ears or from our minds. But sometimes we have to become aware of what's around us that it's part of our human existence and uh, we need to look to rebirth in this season. That's I needed to explain that particular thing because we look to birth, but we also look that every year we re-celebrate that birth. That's rebirth. And uh, so anyway, this is called Peace in the Night. <coughs> and uh, it's kind of don't worry, be happy type of a theme. There's no reason to worry about the way things sound. There's always trouble somewhere that brings our spirits down. But through the heart divine, Comes miraculous light, and in this season.
season of rebirth there comes peace in the night for there is peace to share let it rise everywhere peace to share let it be everywhere around us now peace everywhere around us now peace everywhere yes there is peace yes there is peace There is no reason to worry. We form a circle of life. Within the light of this season, we will be all right. Love will come through us like a star in the night. Peace will come through us. Everything is all right. For there is peace to share. Let it rise everywhere. Peace to share. Let it be everywhere. Around us now. Peace everywhere. Around us now. Peace everywhere, yes, there is peace. Yes, there is peace. Yes, there is Mm, absolutely amazing. Thank you. So now is the time that we will dedicate our offering. We are grateful for these gifts and the abundance that they symbolize. And let us bless them together. Divine love flowing, flowing through, through us blesses, blesses and multiplies all, all that, that we are, all, all that, that we have, all that we give and all that we receive. We are abundantly prosperous and we give thanks. <coughs> all righty. Um, so next week's theme again is um, we're going on Advent and the speaker will be Reverend Neil Worthington, and the topic is the strength of God, happiness. Um, so we do have some other announcements for the coming week, and so I'll share some of those with you, but please check out the website for any other details or, um, details or other events that m we might not be mentioning right now. So Morning Cafe for the month of December is going to be on Saturday mornings only at 9.30 a.m. We have a prayer chaplains meeting on Saturday, December 16th at 11 a.m. here at the church across the hall. Um, and that's for all the prayer chaplains or if there would be somebody that might want to be interested in being a prayer chaplain. Um, and then later in the afternoon on Saturdays, we have Saturday Soul Boost with Reverend Neal, and it's a brief casual discussion of the week's talk topic, the month's topic, and the lesson for the week. And now we will have a PS from, oh, one minute. Oh, I didn't have that on mine. <laughs> 
So um, membership meeting is when? January 7th. January 7th. And you're going to be voting on members right after church. Anything else I need to say about that? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All righty. So a little bit of a PS on the first Sunday in January, we have our annual membership meeting. We hope that you will be here. Even if you are not technically a member, you're part of this community. And so we want you to be here with us. And at that time, we'll vote on uh, a few things. Uh, won't be long and arduous. We'll probably uh, do some holiday celebrating in our uh, snacks or something like that. And then we'll go on into the uh, annual meeting right after the service on January 7th. Want to note a couple other things that are holiday related. You will notice that uh, if you're here in person, if you're not, I apologize. Uh, there's some wonderful little gift items uh, on our table back there. There's some Christmas lights, and there's a place where you can give your love offering. We ask you to do that and be generous, but do some shopping here while you're here. There's some really nice things that you may want to get to share with someone in your family or your circle of friends. Uh, there's also something that we haven't seen before on the wall over here, or actually in front of the whiteboard, is a painting by Debbie Olson. What's the name of it again, Debbie? Um, messenger of Love. Messenger of Love, really appropriate for this scene. So take a look at that and enjoy it. It's not for sale. <laughs> Debbie loves that painting. <laughs> but... Uh, Okay, well, we're, pictures are going to be okay. <laughs> so um, I think that's it for us now. We will join together in a circle here and stay with us if you're online. I'll uh, greet you even though I may not see your uh, brilliant face, uh, but the priest song and then the prayer for protection as we close our service. And the prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. And the presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Cinnamon Twist. And if you're here online, hang in a minute, and I'll uh, try to see who you are and uh, greet you. Uh, 
Um, Tom, if you can put, uh, can you put the uh, uh, participants up and at least I can. Uh, can you tell me? Sammy, welcome. Good to see you again. Donna, Marianne, Teresa, and Frosty. We